and welcome to week two of Modalities Movement Therapy. I'm Brenda and today we're going to be looking at the shoulder. So this video is titled Grams because the shoulder has the greatest range of motion in the body. You're looking at adduction, abduction, external rotation, internal rotation, 360 degree circumduction. So without isolating the joint, because we want to release the pectoral muscles, the neck, the triceps, all the muscles and all the different parts of the arms that are attached to the shoulder, we want to release those so we're getting a greater range of movement in the shoulder. We don't want to um, restrict movement, we want to get as much movement as possible. So as we age, we want to be able to move into any direction. For this workout, you're going to need a peanut. If you don't have a peanut, then you can put two tennis balls inside a sock. Just securely fasten that sock. And the other piece of equipment you're going to need is one of these extended resistance bands. And of course some water, just to hydrate and plump up that fascial tissue. So let's start off, you're going to need a wall and we're going to bring the hand against the wall. So I'm just going to put my hand up against the wall, or the curtains there. And in this position, you, want, you don't want the shoulder to be rising up to the ear. If you're taking a lot of tension, rather bring the hand down slightly. The other thing is if you have a very stiff and tight wrist, you might want to also bring the hand down. So the same thing applies. From there, hand up against the wall, fingers are parallel to the floor, and you're going to rotate the upper, the whole body away. So we're increasing that extension across the arm, and you'll feel a lot of neural, a, a very neural stretch running down the arm here because there are a lot of nerves that come down from the neck into that arm. If you're not comfortable in this position, rotate the body slightly forward. Let's take the hand onto the sternum and you're going to massage to the shoulder. If you can work directly onto the skin, I want you to do that. So from the sternum, you're massaging up to the shoulder and keep that hand where it is. Drop the hand if you need to and we're releasing the pectoral muscles. So the pectoral muscles come right under the armpit, so give that area a bit of a release as well. From that position you're going to look over the other shoulder, take that hand, bring it around the back of the neck, so we want to get that movement into the neck. Here we're going to breathe in and on your exhalation look at the hand. Breathe in and breathe out. Let's do another two, breathing in and rotate. And the last one, and exhale. Release that hand and give it a good shake out, get some of the blood rushing back to the fingertips. Let's move on to the other arm. So you're going to take the hand against the wall, same thing applies here. Any tension in the shoulder, drop the hand. At tight wrist, you're going to drop the hand. But keep the elbow as straight as you can, because you want that release and those neural stretches right up and down the arms. If it is quite tender and painful, it just means there's a bit of tightness, maybe a little bit of an impingement of the nerves. So we want to try and open it up as much as possible. Take the hand down there if you need to. Rotate the upper body as and when you can to feel that stretch. You take it to that, that point, hand onto the sternum and massage up towards the shoulder. So think about the rhomboid muscle at the back. You want to activate that rhomboid muscle on the side that you're pulling the scapula back on. And stretch across the pectoral muscles, right down into the armpit. Work directly onto the skin. Apply a nice deep pressure and spread the fingers out. Keep going. Let's take the hand behind the back of the neck, breathe in here, look over the shoulder on your exhalation, look at the hand against the wall. 
Spread the fingers out as much as you can. Breathe out. Two more. And breathe out. Really apply a nice deep pressure, nice and slow. Don't rush the movement. And breathe out. Take the hand off the wall and give it a good shake. Okay. Both hands, let's just shake them out, flick the fingers, circle the shoulders up and back, nod the head from side to side. So just soften the knees and I want you to relax the arms at the sides, bounce off the heels and let the arms just bounce, 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 bounce. Just getting a nice relaxed movement into the body. Now let's take one hand and you're going to wrap it around the arm and you're going to sweep the hand down that arm. Just moving and stretching, releasing. And the other side, sweep that hand down that arm. Four more. And three. And two. And one. Good. And again, just shake and flip the fingers. Now you're either going to use your peanut or your two tennis balls inside your sock and you're going to bring the foot onto the peanut and you're going to massage around the sole of the foot. Move the foot so you're feeling the releases in different areas of the foot. Keep going. Let's take the foot, the ball of the foot, onto the peanut. And I want you to bring the other foot as close as you can. And here we're going to breathe in. Circle the arms, bending at the waist. So you're tucking the belly back into the spine, squeezing the glutes, rounding, and then release the glutes and bounce. Bounce towards the side that the peanut is under. And bounce to the other side. When you're ready, you take a nice deep breath in. And curl through the spine. So breathe into the roll up. Let's take the peanut under the other foot. And again, just move that peanut around from side to side. Just getting as much release into that foot as possible. Four more. Three, two, and one. From there, I want you to, we're going to change it a little bit. So I want you, you can keep the knee bent. Heel is now on the peanut. And we're going to do the same thing to this side. So you're going to breathe in and you're going to tuck the belly back into the spine and you're going to roll down. Now if you can, try straighten that knee and bounce towards that side. So we want to be able to release and get movement in all different directions. Relax your head so your neck is not taking any strain and bounce. Challenge your balance. When you're ready, you're going to take a nice deep breath in. Uncurl through the spine and again just circle the shoulders up and back. Let's come into a roll down onto the mat. So you can keep that peanut handy because we're going to release the triceps now and around the back of the shoulders. So take a nice deep breath in. Tuck the belly back into the spine, squeeze the glutes. So before you even start, you're almost tucking and squeezing so you feel like you're opening up into the vertebra, almost restricting the range of movement coming down. Once you're in this position, release the glutes and just relax down again and walk onto your hands and knees. Let's take the elbow onto the peanut so you can bring your knees to the diagonal 
and the elbow is on the peanut. We want to try and open up as much as we can. So we've released those pectoral muscles. Let's try and get the elbow in line with the shoulder. So the elbow is not forward and the hands, fingers are not pointing up. You want the fingers lined up with the neck so that you can open up and rest the heel of the, the heel of the ear in the heel of the hand. Drop down, supporting that head, and roll out. Not only will you get a nice release into the triceps, you will release along the lateral side of the body. So here we're breathing in. On your exhalation, you're breathing out. If this is incredibly painful for you, if you have had a shoulder injury or any tension around the neck and this is very sore for you, you might opt to use a foam roller instead of the peanut for this release. Keep going, a nice deep breath in. And out. Let's do another two. And breathe out, try and get that elbow back. If you need to adjust it, do so. Finish off in the extended position, adjust the peanut, or if you are using the foam roller, to the armpit, but just below the armpit. So at the base of the scapula, right around that area. So just at the base when the elbow is extended. Relax that ear on the arm and you can hold on to the top ear. Now just a small rocking motion forward and back. Breathe in as you go back, breathe out as you go forward. If you're not feeling much, adjust the peanut because this is part of that back arm line that we're releasing and it should be quite sensitive. If you breathe, you'll ease yourself more into that movement. Two more. And one more. Good, from there you can leave the peanut where it is. We're going to rock onto our backs. Bring the peanut in line with the earlobe. So we're working along the occipit ridge. For this release, you'll need to hold onto the peanut with your fingers so it doesn't slide down the neck. We want a shearing motion along the occipit ridge. So you're going to keep contact with the peanut. You're not nodding the head but you're shearing, so you're sliding the peanut from side to side along the occiput ridge at the base of the skull. Let's do another four, and three, two, and one. Rock yourself to a seated position. We're now going to bring the peanut onto the rhomboid, so those muscles responsible for retracting the shoulder blades. Position the peanut on either side of the spine, so it's not right at the base of the scapula, slightly higher. So just adjust yourself if you need to. Drop your head, keep your head in your hands, link your fingers, and you're going to breathe in and open up. On your exhalation, you can come into a chest lift, not a neck so I don't want you to lift the neck and bring the chin to the chest. You make sure the head is resting in the hands, the weight of the head, so that the movement is coming from the chest. We're breathing in. Now initiate from the tailbone. So you're rounding the spine from the lower back and then the head will come up. If you want to keep the head on the mat, you can do so. Let's breathe in. Open yourself up. On the exhalation, push the lower back down. And exhale. Breathe in. Open yourself up. Exhale. You should be pushing the lower back down so the feet should be getting a little bit lighter. And breathe in. Open yourself up into the exhalation, lift the feet if you want to, if there's any tension in the lower back or the shoulders, 
just focus more on tucking the pelvis under and activating the glutes. We're going to do another four. And exhale. Breathe in for three. And exhale. Two more. You notice that I'm breathing out for longer than I'm breathing in. And only lift the feet right at that last breath. And release. Hug the knees to the chest. Before we go into the other arm, we're just going to release the lower back slightly. So lying back, bring the feet flat, the knees are bent, and you're going to position the peanut parallel to the spine, and it's in line with the hip bone. So the bottom of the peanut, or the tennis balls, is underneath the buttock, and the top of the peanut is in line with the hip bone. And this is another bony process, like the occiput ridge, the sacroiliac spine. Extend your arms out if you want to, and wiggle the hips from side to side. So you're massaging along that bony process. If it is quite tender, keep the feet flat. If you want to cross the ankle over the knee and open up more into the hip, you can do that. The other option is to open the hip by just dropping the knee and keeping the foot on the mat. Rock from side to side and give that lower back a good release. Keep going. And let's move it over to the other side. So you've got two options here. The feet stay flat, peanut in line with the hip bone and the lower part of the peanut on the glutes. Wiggle the hips from side to side. Adjust the peanut if you need to so it's in line with that hip bone along that bony process. Cross the ankle if you can, open up into the hip, drop the foot and wiggle your way from side to side. All this time you're focusing on your inhalation and your exhalation. If the ankle's crossed over the knee, bounce it a little bit as well. And let's finish off with the peanut on the other elbow or under the other elbow. Remember you want to try and stay as open as you can. Bring the elbow onto the center heel of the hand under the ears, under the ear, and roll along the triceps. Support yourself with the hand and knees to the diagonal. Breathe out on the way up. Breathe in on the way down. Breathe out. If you want to use that foam roller, you can do so. One side is usually a little bit different to the other, sometimes more sensitive. And remember again, we are working in the fascial tissue, which has about 10 times more neural pathways than the muscles. So it is a sensitive area. Breathe in. And let's finish off there. Adjust the peanut to the base of the scapula at the bottom of the armpit. Release the ear onto the arm. And you can hold onto that top ear. Let's rock forward and back and incorporate the breathing. If it's very sensitive, you make the movement small. Focus more on the breathing. Because even just the breathing 
will increase the movement and the release into that area. Keep going. Two more. And the last one. And release. Good. Release and just come up. Let's have a quick drink of water. We're now going to move with onto the the exercises with the resistance band. Taking the resistance band and you're going to fold it in half. If you find there's very little range of movement in your shoulders, then open the resistance band and have the hands further apart. But the closer the hands are together, the more challenging the movements are going to be. So I'm going to lie like this so you can see the first movement. We're going to extend the arms, keep the hands in line with the shoulders. So if you have had an injury in the shoulder, you want to focus on keeping the, the arms at shoulder height. So we don't want to increase that range of movement if there's an impingement or anything happening in the shoulders. So listen to your body and take it as far as you can. Challenge where you can, but really listen to your body so that you don't um, uh, overdo it. Um, but we want to try and increase that, progress to increase that range of movement in the shoulders. Let's take the hands on either side of the band and just holding a nice amount of resistance so you don't want to let the band flop in the center. Keep the resistance in the band and hold on to each end. We're going to breathe in, take the hand down to the mat and then exhale over to the other side. Let's breathe in and breathe out. So that's the movement from that angle, keep going, breathing in and out. So hopefully you'll see that I'm keeping that resistance band in the arms in line with the shoulders. Breathing in and out. Now the nice thing about getting a lot of movement into the arms is we're going to increase that heart rate. So breathe and focus on that movement. Four more. And three. Two more. And one more. into the center. You're now going to keep the left hand on the band and from this angle again you're going to rotate the other hand. So the right hand, I'm going to keep my right hand rotated so the palm is facing up. Bend the elbow into the waist. So now we're working into the rotator cuff into an external range of movement. The reason I like to work on the mat is because that elbow is firmly planted in the mat. Then you're going to rotate the sh shoulder, you're going to keep the resistance in the band and extend the arm up. So it's a bend, it's extend, it's bring it back and up. So let's breathe in and keep breathing in. Breathe out, extend. Breathe in and across, rotate and out. Keep going from this angle, breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. Keep going, breathing in and out. Four more. Three. 
three, two more, and the last one. Good, let's do the same thing to the other side. So change the position of that hand and rotate the other hand to face up. Let's breathe in, open up, and exhale. Breathe in, and exhale. Breathe in, focus more on that exhalation, Keep going from this angle. Four to go. And three. Two more. Last one. Have a nice big yawn and stretch. Change the position of the hand. And yawn, yawn, yawn. Let's uncurl. We're now going to come into a rowing movement. So you're going to take the band and open it up. Bring the band underneath the feet. So open up the band and make sure that you've got it firmly placed under the feet. You don't want it to snap up off the feet. Now just cross that band in the center and you're going to use those elbows and those rhomboids that we have released. So we got a rowing movement. Keep the legs straight for this movement and you tucking into the spine. So you're almost starting to lower the back onto the mat. So we're breathing in here, let's open up. And then exhale. If you need to shorten the band so you can get more pull forward, use those hands as well. Then we're going to come into that extension. So we're gonna move quite quickly into this position. Get your breathing going. Start off slow. Breathe in and out. Keep going. We're going to do this for a minute. Don't let the shoulders come up. Pull the shoulder blades together at the back. So drop those shoulders as much as you can. Keep going. We breathe. Keep going. 20 seconds. Eight. Five more. Two. And one. Good. Release it. In the center, you're going to just to start off with so we get our positioning correct. Just start off in that cross-legged position. Now just shift yourself over to one side of the mat and taking the inside foot, I want you to bring that foot onto the mat. So if you see it from this angle, it's going to be this foot on the mat. So I'll shift yourself to the back of the mat and again you're going to, now you're going to keep the band in a crossover in so shorten it if you need to and from this position 
you're going to tuck, this is your exhalation, you're going to push into the knee and you're going to come up onto that foot, then you're going to bring the knee down, you're going to change feet and then you're going to exhale again, pulling back. So you want to keep the resistance in the band. So we're breathing in, drop the knee, lift the knee and drop. Breathing in, rotate, and exhale. So this is a nice one for an internal rotation in the hips. So I'm going to continue facing you. We exhaling, breathing in, and drop, and exhale. So again, we're going to continue this movement for a minute. Breathing in, and exhaling. Keep the resistance in the band, so pull those hands apart and breathe out. Breathing in and out. Keep going and out. You've got 30 seconds and exhale and exhale. So that's your internal rotation, external rotation, five seconds, and you finish up on the knees, bring the feet and the knees parallel, curl the toes under, push up off the mat into a standing position, have a quick drink of water, then we're going to move into some shoulder rotations in a standing position. So in this position, sit back into that squat position. So you can keep the back open, the pelvis open, and the spine is quite straight, slightly arching, but don't be in that rounded position. I want you to lengthen here and open up over the diaphragm. So again, I want you to keep the resistance in the back. Palms are facing the knees and we're going to work into a bit of a pendulum motion. So you're rocking from side to side. And again, your minute starts now. So getting that heart rate up, getting a nice amount of movement, keeping the resistance in the back and your minute has started. Let's rock from side to side. You're breathing in and out, but the motion is quite quick. You're halfway. Keep the resistance in the band so you're feeling that lateral pull down the side of the arms. 20 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good. And then just uncurl, give the shoulders a bit of a roll, nod the head from side to side. We're now going to work again into the pendulum movement. So the hands are still pointing towards the knees. We're just rotating the body, sitting back into that squat position, and you're transferring the weight forward and back. This time, instead of holding it in this position, we're going to breathe out in this position, rocking for four. Then you're going to rotate either on the balls of the feet or on the heels. And you're going to bounce for four, exhaling here. Breathe in and rotate. Exhale. And we're going to do this for a minute. Exhale. Nice amount of movement. Keep the resistance in the back. Breathe in and rock, two, three, four, exhaling, breathing in, and exhale, two, three, four, breathe in, and exhale, two, three, four, again, nice deep breath in, and exhale, two, three, you're halfway, breathe in, and exhale, two, three, four, again, breathe in, 
and exhale, two, three, four, breathe in, and exhale, two, three, ten seconds, and exhale, last one, and exhale, two, three, four, stay in this position, we're going to rotate behind, so I want to get into a little bit more of a spiral movement, so we're going to reach, now not bouncing and rocking in a pendulum, still a pendulum movement, we're just going to take the arm back, you're going to circle up and rotate, so you should hopefully find this a little bit challenging, and you're going to bring the arms forward, and then we're rocking back into that rotation as much as you can, breathe in, rotate, and exhale. So slightly slow, well, a lot slower the movement, but you want to get more range of movement. Nice deep breath in, keep the resistance in the band, keep going, breathing in, and rotate, breathing in, and rotate, keep going, and rotate, we're going to do four more, and rotate, Breathe in and rotate. Three to go. And rotate. Breathing in and rotate. Last two. Follow that back hand. Last one. And finish off. Coming into the center, keep the band where it is. If you need to extend it, do so. Otherwise, keep it in a band position in half. We're going to breathe in and out. If this is your range of movement, stick with that range of movement. And as you progress, it will increase. Breathe in and out. Let's breathe in and out. So try and take advantage of the range of motion in the shoulder. Taking longer on that exhalation Let's do another two, breathing in and out, and the last one, and out. Keep the band up, and let's take, I'm going to take my right hand at the top and grab hold of the band. So my top hand is facing forward, the palm, and the back hand is facing away from the body. We're not going to pull the band away, but we're going to move, pull down with the bottom hand and extend the top hand, the, the top arm. So we're going to be opposing, moving in opposing directions, pull down and pull up. So you are increasing the range of movement in that, in that up and down plane there, pull down and extend. Pull down and extend. Let's breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Keep going. And two more. Last one. And breathe out. Let's change hands. So bring the bottom hand to the top and rotate that other arm. Let's continue the movement, breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. In and out. In and out. Keep 
going. We've got four more and three, two to go and the last one. Good. Keep that bottom arm down and we're going to work into this movement, pulling those elbows up. So again, I want you to try and shorten the band as much as you can. So bring the hands as close together as you can. And we're breathing in and out. Breathe in and out. Try to keep those elbows as close together as you can. Breathing in and out. Keep going. Nice deep breath in and out again we've got four to go and three two more and the last one and exhale. Release the band, just circle the shoulders and again nod the head from side to side. Our last exercise with the band and then we're going to move onto the mat into some plank and push up positions. Let's extend the arms in line with the shoulders. So see from this angle, what we're going to do now is we're going to bend one elbow. So we're going to bring the band across the body and then back into the front. So we're going to bring it to the other side and back to the front. Again, make sure you're keeping that resistance. Now pull with that opposite arm and pull forward. Breathe in and out. Let's add a bend in the center, pulling the shoulder legs together at the back. Extend. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out, breathe in, and out. We're going to continue this for a minute. I want you to uh, speed the movement up. So we're going to breathe in, breathe out on the bend to the center, breathe in, Keep going, 15 seconds. Time to go. Last one. And release the band. Have a quick drink of water. Before we go down into that plank position, I want you to take your hands on either side of the spine. You're going to lean slightly back so you're opening up into the diaphragm. Then we're going to rotate and use the heels of the hands to just give that lower back over the occiput area a bit of a release. Working into the lateral stretch as well. So hopefully you're feeling it down the lateral side of the body. Four more, and three, and two, last one, and shake everything up. Coming back into a roll down, I'm going to go walk forward onto the hands in a plank position. 
tuck the belly back into the spine, squeeze your glutes, so you're opening up into the hips when we squeeze and open up, then you're going to relax there and bounce. Walk forward onto the hands, into that plank position, and holding that plank position, if you're taking too much strain in the shoulders or the wrists, you're just going to hold the plank down on the elbows. Push the weight into the heels, so you're not forward, pushing back, squeezing the glutes. By pushing the heels down, it'll help you activate those glutes more easily. Up onto the hands, we're going to breathe in and lower down to the mat. Release the toes and then curl the toes under. Coming back up, we're going to lift up into that plank position. If you need to use the knees, you can just release the feet and drop down, push back up into that um, short plank position, otherwise you're curling the toes under and dropping down. If you find that your chest wants to lift before your tailbone, you stay on the knees and push up into that plank position. Curl the toes under, you can alternate between the two as well like I'm doing onto the knees, push up, keeping those elbows as close to the waist as you can so we're activating those rhomboid muscles. Push back up, curl the toes under if you want to, drop down and again uncurl, push up, curl the toes under, lower down, keep going, we're going to do four more, push up, Curl and drop. Three more. Push up. Curl and drop. Two more. Push up. Curl and drop. And the last one. Push up. Remember that tailbone squeeze. Push up. Curl. And let's all go down onto the elbows. If you've been on the elbows, release the knees and just stay in that plank position. We're going to hold it here for a minute. Push into the heels. Relax into that position. And the, reason, the way you're going to relax into that position is by breathing into it. Keep going, we're going to do another 30 seconds. Drop onto the knees and uncurl the toes if you need to. Fifteen to go. Five, four, three, Two and one. Drop onto the knees, lower the chest down, bring the forehead onto the hands, hands are one on top of the other, and let's just wiggle the hips from side to side. So you want to feel that movement up the spine into the shoulders and the neck. Just releasing those vertebrae. And we're going to finish off with a lovely shoulder stretch. So you're going to take your one ear onto the mat and open up the arms so the palms are facing down. The front hand, the one that you're looking at, I want you to kick that foot back and up and then you're going to open up that top shoulder and bounce into that position. If you can, if you've got too much tension, then you just hold it and breathe into it. Breathing, diaphragmatic breathing, you'll increase that stretch. Let's take the arm back. You're going to bring the leg back. You're going to look over to the other hand. You're going to kick that foot back and up. 
And you're going to bring that arm behind you and bounce into that stretch. Take the arm back and let's do two more. Bring the leg back, look to the other hand. A nice deep breath in. Let's open up and bounce that arm. Breathe in and keep breathing. Let's release it. Bring the leg back. Change sides for the last one. And bounce. And on back. Come back to center. Extend the arms. Squeeze and lift, squeezing the glutes. And you're splashing. Splashing the legs, kicking the feet. Relax the head, look down and bounce the arms. Keep going. Three, two, and one. Good. Hands underneath the shoulders and push back into child's pose. So feet are slightly together and knees apart and relax your forehead onto the mat and breathe. Four counts in, six counts out. Feel the rib cage expanding so you're opening up, pushing the diaphragm down. That'll help expand those intercostal muscles between the rib cage and hopefully you'll feel that releasing in the lower back as well. Extend the hands as far forward as you can. The last breath you're going to take, breathe in, and on the exhalation, tuck the pelvis under, slide the fingers to the knees, and uncurl through the spine. Link the fingers behind the back, nod the head from side to side, and shake everything out. Hopefully you're feeling that you've got more range of movement into the shoulders, and hopefully the neck. As this whole area, any tension in the jaw will lead down into tension in the neck, which can also affect the shoulders. That rounded posture is also making that range of movement in the shoulders quite tricky. The more we open up, the more we focus on de-stressing, working into parasympathetic or rest and digest breathing, the more we open up, the more movement you're going to allow those shoulders to have instead of being in that defensive posture. So well done and thank you for joining me.